Thank you, kids. Good morning, everybody, and happy Sabbath. For those of you don't, who don't know me, I'm Pastor Lynette Laporte. I am the ch a family life and children's pastor of the church, and um, I'm just so happy to see all your beautiful faces here today. So kids, this week, did we learn a lot of things about how to shine Jesus' light? We did, didn't we? Well, I would like to thank all my VBS kids to listening to your crew leaders and making this another great vacation Bible school. All right? Thank you. Okay. Well, let's please turn our Bibles to John 8, 12. It's up here. You can read it as well. It says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Well, before we start, I would like to thank all the VBS team for all the wonderful work they did in shining their lights for Jesus. We had a preschool station and an elementary vacation Bible school. So a very special thank you to this lady right over here, Mrs. Cuevas. She was the preschool VBS director, and um, she did an amazing job. She's also our principal at, at Laguna Niguel Junior Academy and the kindergarten through second grade teacher, so she has a lot of hats. Um, so I took the time to visit both VBSs, and each station was just beautiful. We had Danielle and Victor in KidVid. Yvonne Stanton, Ruby and Friends at the Imagination Station, Gilbert and Julie Nye, Doris Williams and Madai Ventura at Snack, John and Genevieve Thomas at All Star Games, Cindy Castellazzo, Sam, Caleb, George and Friends for the opening and closing, and uh, Caleb and George also joined Marco Leon, the leader of Bible Adventures, Stacy Small and Tanil Persona were helping Mrs. Cuevas as leaders. We had Tanya Acuna, Paul Dumpus, and friends as our AV team, which we couldn't do without. And of course, our breakfast planners and registration leaders, the Ohanesian family. Also, all the assistants, which was most of our juniors, early teens, and youth. Our photographer, uh, Moises Ortiz, he was our lead photographer. He did so many things to help behind the scenes. And he also was a videographer with Nick and our crew leaders and counselors, which once again were mostly our juniors, early teens, and youth. They all worked their tails off to decorate, train, and run errands before and during VBS. And thank you to our nurses, Barbara Schneider and Heidi Manrique. And also Heidi Haga, Alan Marquardt, is that, is that how you pronounce it? I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. And the decorating team for all the beautiful decorations. Heidi wanted me to make sure that I gave kudos to Alan for working on the mechanics of everything that you see up here. And Leticia Moreno for the beautiful balloon collage that you see in the lobby. And if you're here, Leticia, I'm going to have to hire you for our next birthday. <laughs> she did amazing. And also, we all know Julie Thomas, and I'm going to have to say thank you for all your mentorship and help behind the scenes. She did a, a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and last, but definitely not least, is my husband over there. Um, he worked tirelessly behind the scenes at home while I prepared for Sabbath school and vacation Bible school. So thank you to my husband as well. And everyone pulled their way, and that's what makes it possible for us to work together in unity to share Jesus with our friends, family, and community. We truly embodied the body of Christ this week. But I got to say, I had some favorite moments in each station. Heidi Madrique, the mad scientist, made me laugh so hard in Imagination Station. But I wanted to share one of my favorite moments in preschool. Um, Miss Stacy created fun games for the preschool and kindergartners and to get them comfortable with each other. On the first day, 
um, she did a little activity, and I just thought it was so precious. I wanted to share it with you. It's in, on slide three. Did that make you smile? Yeah. Well, on day one, what they learned was when life feels dark, shine Jesus' light. The kids learned that God came from heaven in the form of a baby named Jesus to save us. But before Jesus arrived, the devil, Satan, used King Herod to shut out, to try and shut out the light of the world by killing all the Jewish babies to make sure Jesus would never grow up. But the angels were not having that. They told Joseph and Mary, they're like, hey, you got to go to Bethlehem because we are not letting the light of the world get shut out. Let's go to the next slide. Here are Victor and Danielle teaching this theme in the Kid Vid Station where they learned about the kids' testimonies and left with a little glow-in-the-dark buddy with their memory verse. And in the next slide, this was Yvonne's room, Imagination Station, where the kids did science experiments to learn about lights in the dark. If you go to the next slide, uh, this is our astronaut Marco in Bible Adventures. Please notice the biblical time spacesuit. Marco traveled all the way here from Bible Times just for us. Thank you, Marco. And he also brought Caleb and George back with him, who acted out some very interactive Bible stories. Yes, Marco the astronaut was one of my favorite characters. <laughs> On day two, we learned that when people don't get along, shine Jesus' light. Our focus was the Bible verse that says, live in harmony with each other from Romans 12:6. So to correlate, correlate that idea, we learned a Bible story from Luke chapter 19. During this time, baby Jesus has already grown up. He began his ministry and sharing his mission with the world when he was 30 years old. And at this point, he's 33 years old. So he's been healing the sick and teaching how we should treat each other. He's even prophesied to the disciples about exactly how he's going to die. He's pretty famous now. So as Jesus is passing through Jericho, there's a tax collector named Zacchaeus who's been dying to meet him. But Jesus is, as usual, surrounded by a crowd. And Zacchaeus is a really short guy, so he can't really see anything. So he jumps onto this tree, and voila, he can see Jesus. And to his surprise, Jesus is like, hey, Zacchaeus, hi, what you doing up there? Come on down. And by the way, can we hang out with each other at your house today? Zacchaeus is like starstruck. Yeah, yeah, of course. He's super excited. Listen, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine yourself at a concert with your favorite singer. There's thousands of people in the audience, and all of a sudden, you're out in the bleachers. And that famous, that famous singer calls you out, and he says, Hey, Mariah. Come here. I want, I want to take you to my house today, or I want to hang out with you at your house, and we'll have some pizza. Can we hang out? How would you feel? Right? But what if your favorite singer called out someone who wasn't so nice, and maybe they stole your money? How would you feel? Not so good, right? So... Zacchaeus wasn't very popular. He was an enemy to a lot of the people. He stole their money, and he put it into his pocket and became very rich by overcharging people with taxes, also known as a tax collector. They were not liked. But God, yes, here comes Jesus, the Son of God, and he saw beyond that. He saw Zacchaeus' heart, and with Jesus' love, Zacchaeus was changed he became a follower of Jesus Christ, and he changed his ways so much that he paid back not double, but fourfold. That means he paid four times as much to everyone that he had stolen from. So when people don't get along, 
we can shine Jesus' light by not taking sides and loving both people since only God really knows their hearts. Let's go to the next slide, slide seven. And oh, right, nope, before that, the Cindy and Sam. Yep, Cindy, perfect. So this is Cindy and Sam working together with the kids to get this experiment to work. Is that slide seven? Yeah. The lesson that they learned here was that when people work together in harmony, they can make, that's the one, they can make great things happen in people's hearts. You just saw that experiment today. And just like they did with this experiment, they brought home the point of living in harmony with each other. On day three, we learned when good things happen, shine Jesus' light. Our verse of the day was from Psalm 100, one, Psalm 100, verse 1, which says, Shout with joy to the Lord. Well, good things happened every day at VBS. And here are some pictures that I thought captured some of that joy in the hearts of our kids. Here's Ben and Declan at the playground during snack time. And here are some, pre some of the preschoolers doing their crafts of the sun, using Play-Doh. Before that, let's, keep, let's stay there. They're using Play-Doh and some other fun stuff. And the next one is our preschoolers at the preschool games with Miss Stacy. And then there's, on the, there's Jean, Emery, Will, and Reed doing experiments with Cindy and Sam to illustrate the lesson of that day. And the next one, oh, Emma and Naomi, besties. They're in the mission control rocket that's right there in the lobby. And in the next one, there's Emery and Genesee that are enjoying it too. And the next slide is, so this is Peter and Brian. These two guys were a dynamic duo. They were really great counselors. So thank you to them. They did so good with the kids. And the next one is Heidi Manrique, my favorite mad scientist <laughs> in the imagination station. And finally, on the, in the next one, every day, in the next slide, is the kids singing. Every day they got up if they wanted to and they sang songs just like they did today. And day four's Bible point was, when life feels dark, shine Jesus' light. It was really special to me because I was able to sit and listen to, the, to an entire station that day. I went into the kid vid room to learn about how dark it was for the disciples when Jesus died on the cross, then rose up to life again, just to leave them again and go back to heaven. But what Victor and Danielle did is they talked about how when it's raining or when it's cloudy, the sun is still shining. It's just hiding. So even though we live in a dark world, Jesus is still there in our darkness to give us hope because he promised. He promised that he would be with us and send the comforter through the Holy Spirit. He also promised, he has so many promises, but another one is that he would come again a second time, but this time to give us an eternal life in heaven, in paradise, where we will never be sad, we'll never cry, and he promises in the Bible that he's going to wipe away all our tears. Can you imagine? Whew, it, that's, just incredible, that's just incredible to me, and that is why I do this, because I am so excited for Jesus to come, and I just want to bring as I want to help him, and we want to help him bring as many people as possible there. On our final day, we learned that when people need help, shine Jesus' light. The Bible story that goes with that theme is about Philip the Evangelist from the New Testament book of Acts. Acts 5 tells of five, seven men, including Philip, who were chosen as deacons to lead the early church. Later on in Acts 8, while Philip is traveling, he finds an Ethiopian man that's trying uh, to read the Old Testament book of Isaiah, so God speaks to Philip, and he's like, Philip, I need you to go over there, and I need you to talk to him. So Philip walks over there. He stands by him, and he notices he's reading the book of Isaiah, and he's like, do you understand this? And the, the Ethiopian man is confused. He's like, you know, not really. So right then and there, Philip explains the book of Isaiah to him. He gives him a Bible study <laughs> right then and there. And the lesson here is that no matter what you're doing, when others need help, you can shine for God by giving them a helping hand wherever you can because you have gifts and talents that God has given you. Each and every one of you does. It can be 
Maybe there's a friend who needs help in math at school, and you're good at that. Or maybe you're good at basketball, and someone else is it, and you can teach them. Or maybe someone just needs a friend. No one is hanging out with them, and they, they're alone. You can go and talk to them. When it comes to someone who's visiting at church, they may be coming from far. They may need a place to eat, and you can take them to your house. There are many ways that we can help people with their needs, even if it's just, a simple, it's just as simple as a smile, right? So the concept of letting our lights shine comes from the life of Jesus. During his time, the Pharisees had created a system of traditions that made it very complicated for the Jews to do this. Today, we sometimes do the same thing, but it's really quite simple. About Jesus, my favorite author, Ellen White, says in page 465 of the book Desire of Ages, that which was revealed in his words was revealed also in his character. He was the embodiment of the truths he taught. I do nothing of myself, he continued, but as my father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. He did not attempt to prove his messianic claim, but showed his unity with God. Further down in the book, on page 466, Ellen White says, Among his hearers, many were drawn to him in faith, and to them he said, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. She's quoting Jesus in John 8.32 here, which was our main memory verse, and I'll repeat that again. Um, Is it John 8.32? John 8.12. He says, when Jesus, John 8.12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then John 8.32 says, let's turn our Bibles. I don't have it up on there, but I'm going to read it to you. It says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Who wants to feel free? Who wants to become free? This is the truth. If you read it and pray to God for understanding and for openness of heart, you'll fall in love with Jesus. You'll start reflecting his light, and you'll shine for him. Because by, the Bible says by beholding him, we will become changed. It's that easy. Who wants to renew their relationship with Jesus or start a relationship with Jesus today? Are you ready to invite him into your heart? Are you ready to read his word and become his disciple today? Are you ready to be free? I am. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm ready to go to heaven. If so, let's all stand for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for um, this wonderful opportunity to share Jesus with not just the children, but just to um, share, share him with each other through fellowship. And I thank you for this opportunity to grow in you because I know that we've all grown and that's what our, um, that's what our walk with Jesus is. We become changed. And when we become changed, we become transformed. It hurts sometimes growth. Those growing pains hurt heavenly father, but we want to be better. We want to reflect your light. So I pray for each and every person that's here and that you're, you pour your love and your Holy Spirit into their hearts so that each and every day they can get to know you better and shine for you. And I pray that you come soon, Lord Jesus. Write all our names in the book of life. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right. All right, kids. Time to sing. <laughs>